Ah, so you're an alchemist then. The art of alchemy opens many new opportunities in the land of Skyrim. It can give boost to your character no matter who you are and what you play as. Furthermore, alchemy is also a way of making a tiny profit, with many shops and roaming hunters who are willing to buy your potions, poisons and ingredients that you have managed to produce. However, the new systems that have been made for Skyrim make it difficult to craft potions on the move. No longer are the mortar and pestle the required tool for alchemy. Now, similar to that in Fallout 3, you can only brew potions using an alchemy lab. This is in my opinion a huge loss, as the whole idea of being an alchemist in the game is to find ingredients and make potions while on the move in the wild, not in a lab found only in populated areas. However, to move with the times we must adapt, and in this video I'm going to help you on your way to become an advanced alchemist using some hopefully helpful advice and information that I've discovered on my travels. Firstly, where can alchemy labs be found? There are many of these labs scattered throughout Skyrim, but by far the easiest way to get hold of one is to buy a house, which provides you with your own private lab as well as plenty of storage space for your ingredients as well. However, you do need to note that you can only get these things by decorating your house. Aside from this, alchemy labs can be found in every court wizard quarters, such as Faringar's secret fires room in Whiterun Castle. Also, there is at least one alchemy lab found in every town, usually within an alchemy store, but sometimes found in inns such as the Sleeping Giant Inn that resides in Riverwood. There are also a few found in shacks and caves within the wilderness, being the closest thing to being able to make potions in the wild, but they are hard to locate. Next off are where to find ingredients. You can obtain ingredients by several methods, finding them, buying them, stealing them, or scavenging off dead animals and creatures. Easy places you can find ingredients right away are the forest in the west and northern areas of the Rifthold, the middle and northwest areas of Falkreath, the west of East March, and the east of Whiterun. Also, the areas surrounding the Hold capitals tend to be good spots as well. There are an immense number of different ingredients in Skyrim. Each have four alchemic properties, which when combined with another ingredient with at least one matching property, can produce the potion. However, due to the magnitude of different ingredients that can be found in the game, I am only going to talk about a few key ones that can be used to make five very useful potions and poisons. I have also put a link in the description of a table giving you every ingredient in Skyrim and their properties if you want to delve into it further. Now, the potions and poisons I am going to help you create are ones that will restore your health and magicka and damage that of your enemies. I am also going to tell you how to make an invisibility potion, as not only is it highly useful, it is a brilliant way of turning quite a substantial profit when sold. Before I start off, I just want to say that the recipes I am using are what I think are the easiest and most efficient ways of producing my Lester potions and poisons. You can buy recipes from alchemy shops, but these are few and don't provide the best way of doing things. Also, in case you didn't know, you create potions by selecting the different ingredients you are going to use and then clicking the craft button. Another neat feature that has been introduced is that if you discover an ingredient's effect, it will group into little tabs, which is very convenient when you can't remember what goes with what. Anyway, with that in mind, let's begin. First off is the Potion of Restore Health. The first ingredient you will need is a blister wart. Blister warts are found mainly within caves and can be seen in plentiful numbers in chill wind depths, which is found in the very far west of Hajar March Hold. You will also need a blue mountain flower, which can be found, along with red and purple mountain flowers, in bountiful supply in the wilderness, and especially near the hold capital of Solitude. You could also use wheat instead of either of the other two ingredients. Wheat can be found in farms and large town areas as well. You can also purchase it from many different stalls located all over Skyrim. Yet another alternative is an imp stall, which is again frequently found in caves, and is also seen in large numbers in Chillwind Depths. The next potion is Restore Magicka. This requires a Mara Tapinella which can be found on dead tree stumps in most forest areas, especially near lumber towns such as Riverwood, which is located south of the White Runhold capital. You will also need a red mountain flower, which is found in the same locations as the blue mountain flower discussed earlier. Now, on to poisons. Although poisons may not be how you play the game, they are definitely worth mentioning as they can really help in almost every situation you can find yourself in. In case you didn't know, Poisons are used by putting them onto your weapon, to be used when you next hit an enemy. For example, shooting an enemy with an arrow down some damaged health poison will take away his health, 
giving you an extra advantage in the battle. First off, it's the poison of damage health. This needs a red mountain flower and a skeeva tail. Skeeva tails are found from the corpses of skeevers, who usually reside in sewers, but are also found in some underground warrens and caves. They can also be found randomly on paths within the wild. The poison of damage magicka requires a piece of hanging moss and a Nordic barnacle. Hanging moss is found dangling off stone building and structures, especially the ancient stone ruins. It can also be found on the rocky outcrops that stretch across the hold of reach. Nordic barnacles can be found on shipwrecks scattered around Skyrim, such as the wrecks found in the water just north of Pilgrim's Trench campsite, which itself is located on Winterhold's northern coastline. The wrecks are marked by a few rowing boats floating above. Nordic barnacles are also located reasonably frequently on the coastline, and rather scarcely on the edge of rivers and lakes. Now the final potion I'm going to talk to you about is the Potion of Invisibility. This is made using vampire dust and a lunar mothwing. Vampire dust is, as the name suggests, found from fallen vampires and also members of the Silver Hand. Vampire lairs are quite uncommon, but the most useful one is Broken Fang Cave, which is found southwest of Whiterun Hold. The Silver Hand members can be found in several random camps across Skyrim, but are easily found when going through the companion's quest called the Silver Hand. Lunar moth wings can be obtained in groups of two from the glowing moths that can be seen at night time, found most commonly in the wilderness areas. Another ingredient you could use instead is Ice Wraith Teeth, which are collected from killing an Ice Wraith. Ice Wraiths are generally found in the snowy areas of Skyrim. They are also found in the caves underneath the Winter Hold College and on the path up to the throat of the world. Well, that's the end of the guide. I hope you now have a firm grasp on the topic of alchemy. You can check out my channel for more videos, but until then, arrivederci.